What's Gucci, everybody? And to today I'm going to be talking about one of the many sorting algorithms in merge sort. As you may know, sorting is used a lot in computer science to sort a myriad, myriad amount of data and is very helpful to sort databases and other such high-end applications. Since this is so essential, there are many algorithms of sorting with different efficiencies and different uses in different cases. Now this is a sorting algorithm that I like called the merge sort and today I'm going to be telling you how it works and how efficient it is. Now the mer merge sort follows this simple alg algorithm. It splits the array into two halves until there is an array of only one element and then sorts the left half sorts the right half and then merges the two. Now that may sound a little confusing at first but don't worry I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step example. Here we have this array with eight elements with numbers which are easily sortable by I but but today we're gonna to be over looking over how do we make a computer program do this. Now you could use sorting for anything such as strings or objects as long as you define how they comparable how is something less than equal to or greater than another thing numbers are very easy as that is where this compare comparable idea stems from now let's start the first thing as I said we're going to do is we are going to split the array into two halves so what we're going to do is we're just going to go right down the middle between 23 and 56 and split this collection. I call it an array but really it could be anything you want to sort. And I'm going to split it and I'm going to make two parts. Now as you see we have two now we have two arrays that are still unsorted but that's okay. Now we're going to just continue splitting so I'm going to take these two arrays and then split them again so I have two arrays of length four and I'm going to split them into four arrays of length two and as you can see here we're just doing some splitting here where I'm going right down the middle and splitting them but still putting these together and then I'm going to do the same thing to make them to make only them have arrays of one element and take that take that and one half is sort is not sorted but totally split up and now all of these elements all totally split up and now I'm going to start merging the elements together once again what I like to do is look at the leftmost element and check and compare it to the adjacent element and compare them. So as you can see I'm gonna look at the leftmost element 77 and compare it to 1 and since 1 is less than 77 I'm gonna merge them together but I'm gonna put 1 in front of 77 as it should be. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other six elements making other arrays of length 2 or collections. 23 is before 34 as I compare those two I compare 56 to 99, 56 is before 99, I compare 29 to 8, 8 is before 29. And so back again, and so back again I have four collections of length 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing to get collections of length 4. I'm going to again look at what I like to think of as the leftmost element and compare it to the adjacent collection which is this one in this case so I'm gonna I'm gonna now compare 1 to 23 well 1 is less than 23 so I put that there and then I'm gonna look at the leftmost element again 77 77 is greater than 23 so I'm gonna put 23 first and then I didn't I'm still looking at 77 because I have not put that anywhere and then 77 is less is greater than 34 excuse me and I'm gonna put 34 there and 77 is the only thing left so I'm gonna put 77 there and now I'm looking at this array and I'm gonna again look at 56 
and I'm going to compare it to 8, and 8 is the biggest. So I'm going to, again, put 8 there. Sorry about that. And then I still haven't put that down, so I'm going to compare 56 to 29. 29 is the smallest, so I'm going to put 29 there. And I'm going to put 50, gonna come, again, just put these two here because I know they're already sorted. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to merge the two collections of length 4. I'm going to compare 1 to 8, and 1 is smaller, so I'm going to put 1 there. Then I'm going to compare 23 to 8. 8 is smaller. I'm going to compare 23 to 29. 23 is smaller. I'm going to compare 34 to 29. 29 is smaller. I'm going to 34 to 56. 34 is smaller. And I think you get it. 77, 56 is smaller. And then I'm going to put 77 there. And then I'm going to put 99 there. And wahoo! The array is sorted. I hope you guys got that algorithm. And for some quick other tips, big O. I'm going to quickly talk about big O notation. If you don't know what big O notation is, I will talk about it in another video. But if you do, I will. You can. If you don't, you can sign off here, or you can keep on listening. The big O efficiency for this algorithm is n log n, which is pretty good in the worst and best case, meaning that even in the worst case, as it was in reversely ordered, it would still take n log n, where n is the number of items to be sorted. And it will never deteriorate to n squared, which is good. So if you're using a really big collection, it will still be n log n. And also, another additional note is that it takes you need an n additional memory space used for dividing the arrays, or dividing the collections, as I should say to provide for the additional space you're going to use. That's all I have to say. Thank you for watching this tutorial.